Magnitude and direction seems like a lot to ask for vectors, but okay. Hey there, welcome to How'd You Get That, where we solve all your math and physics problems. Today, we are taking a look at vectors, and more specifically, vector directions, describing how vectors point in space. Now, vectors are things that have both magnitude and direction, right? Magnitude is pretty straightforward to describe. It's basically just the measure of the thing that you want to measure. So for instance, the magnitude of the displacement vector is just the point-to-point -point distance between the endpoints of a path. Direction, though, is a little bit trickier to describe. Sometimes we talk about direction in terms of north, south, east, and west. Sometimes we talk about it in terms of an angle, and other times we talk about it in terms of unit vectors. We're gonna focus on those last two today, looking at it in terms of measuring an angle, and also describing it in terms of unit vectors. Now let's start with the angle notation, because that's what the one we normally see early on in physics. Let's say I have a displacement vector that points from 0, 0 to 5, 12. The displacement vector itself is the arrow that points from the origin point all the way to 5, 12. You can see that we get a diagonal line with a fairly steep slope, but now we need to describe what that direction actually is, sort of in the northeast kind of direction. The thing to remember about direction, though, is that it needs to be measured from some reference axis. We often use the positive x axis as our reference axis, at least in physics. We could use the negative x axis if we really wanted to, or we could even use the y axis, although that's not terribly common. But it doesn't really matter. As long as we are consistent and state what that reference axis is, we're okay. So back to our example with the displacement vector d. We need to measure the angle that that vector makes with the positive x axis, because that's what we're gonna use as our reference axis. Now, how are we gonna find that angle? Well, trigonometry, of course. Yay. It's not actually all that bad. The first thing I'm gonna do is draw another vector that's parallel to the x-axis that is five units long. And then I'm gonna draw another vector that's 12 units long along the positive y-axis, just like this. The reason I did this is, as you can see, I've made a right triangle. The right angle is right there. And now I can use right triangle trigonometry to solve for this angle. As you can see, the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent side which in this case is just 12 over 5. So theta is equal to the arctan of 12 over 5, or about 67.38 degrees. Now for good measure, let's go ahead and find the magnitude of this vector. We'll use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for this. The magnitude of vector d is equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared, which, doing a little bit of math, is equal to 13. So now we can fully describe our vector in terms of magnitude and direction. Vector d is equal to 13 meters, 67.38 degrees above the positive x-axis. This is a complete and perfectly adequate way of describing the vector, but there are other ways of doing so, and some more elegant ways if uh, you're interested in delving into elegant math. One way is to describe it using unit vectors, which is what we're gonna get into now. If you haven't been introduced to unit vectors yet, don't worry, they're not super complicated, but they're super useful. Basically, a unit vector is a vector that points along one specific axis. So for instance, it points along the x-axis, or it points along the y-axis, or along the z-axis, or any number of other axes that we make. The magnitude of any unit vector is, as you might guess, exactly one, which makes them super useful because anytime I multiply them by another number, I just get one times that vector axis. So for instance, if I have a vector pointing three units in the positive x axis, I can describe that vector as three i hat. The notation for unit vectors is to put a little caret or a little hat on top of our vector. So for instance, you might see i hat, j hat, and k hat in Cartesian coordinates to describe the x, y, and z direction respectively. You might also see r hat to describe a radial direction, or theta hat to describe an angular direction which is orthogonal to r hat. Unit vectors within a single coordinate system are also something called orthogonal. Now orthogonal just basically means that they're perpendicular to each other, but the main takeaway is to show that unit vectors point in only one direction in a given coordinate system. We can also have unit vectors like E1 hat and E2 hat that point in the E1 and E2 directions, as well as E3 hat, which points in the E3 directions, if you're into that sort of thing. 
I can describe any vector in terms of unit vectors. For instance, our displacement vector d here can be described as moving 3 units along the positive x-axis and 12 units up along the positive y-axis. So I might describe my vector d as 5 i-hat plus 12 j-hat. That means that I've moved 3 units in the i-hat direction, or the positive x-direction, and 12 units in the j-hat direction, or the positive y-direction. And that's it. That's how unit vectors can describe the direction. But it doesn't really look like we've described a direction here. Unlike using angles, where we kind of have an intuitive sense of how angles relate to direction, we don't really have that here. But if we look closer, it does describe the exact and unique direction of this vector. We see, again, that we're pointing 5 units along the positive x-axis and 12 units along the positive y-axis. And that's a unique direction in the xy plane. There are no other ways that those two component vectors can combine to describe a different direction within the xy plane. And this is how unit directors describe direction. There is no other way for them to describe a different direction, so just by writing 5i hat plus 12j hat gives us enough information to tell what the direction is. So those are the main ways that we find direction to be described when talking about vectors. We can either use an angle or we can use unit vectors. Now angles generally show up earlier in your physics coursework, but unit vectors can be super, super powerful. And we're going to see why that is in some upcoming videos. If you have questions about vectors, unit vectors, or direction, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.